Hey, Seth David here with another spectacular screencast. This time we're talking about how to customize sales receipts in QuickBooks Online. Don't forget if you need help, more direct help, more in-depth help with any of this, just go over here to contact Seth right here at SethDavid.com and uh, fill out this awesome little form I've given you that lets you get in touch with me. And I'm usually very good about responding within 24 hours, most of the time, much faster than that. Uh, also, don't forget we're in production on our new course, Course 21, Accounting and Bookkeeping Cloud Practice Management, the self-study course. You can access that by signing up on Patreon and signing up for 97 and up. That's a 97 and up only exclusive. And of course, it gives you the entire blueprint for how to build, start or restart, grow and manage your entire accounting or bookkeeping practice. We've got 59 lessons outlined when I'm finished. I will have 97 lessons outlined in this. And once we start rolling out the content and you've signed up, you'll get a video a day for 97 days so long as you stay in the program. Now, Let's talk about how to customize sales receipts in QuickBooks Online. First of all, if you want to go into the QuickBooks Online test drive, I've made it easy for you. Just come over here to SethDavid.com, click on Useful Links and Resources, and right in here you'll find the QuickBooks Online test drive. So just click here. And by the way, if you have any suggestions for things I can include here, please let me know. Uh, we'll enter the code to prove we're not a bot. And the way to customize a sales form in QuickBooks Online is actually pretty easy. Over here in the gear icon, of course, if you're logged into your own company, it won't say sample company. It will have your company's name. Click on that, and let's go to account and settings. And first of all, if you have a logo, you probably should upload it here in the company settings. Once that's there, it'll be available to be used when you go into the sales settings here and go into customize, and we'll choose customize look and feel. Now, your uh, own QuickBooks Online company will have a default template included here. There's none here because we're in a sample company uh, in the test drive company. So click New Style. And over here, you'll choose which form you're customizing, whether it's invoice estimate or sales receipt. I'll stick with invoice. Um, we can title the template, and we'll call it Seth's Invoice. And over here, you have different styles you can choose from. There's airy, modern, fresh friendly and bold. Now, here's why I like bold, because this is just kind of who I am. I want to discourage people from printing. So I like this this uh, this form because it's going to uh, it's going to tax their uh, ink cartridges if they try to print this. And I really don't want people printing anything. I don't see any reason under the sun in this world on this planet why anyone should ever print an invoice. It's actually easier to manage in a digital format and we can email the PDFs and we can convert PDFs to Excel very easily these days if we need to mark it up somehow on our end for our records or whatever we need to do. There's just so many ways to deal with it that are more efficient and much more environmentally friendly of course. So I choose this form specifically for that reason because if they go to print this it's going to use up all their ink. Uh, so again just trying to discourage that. On the right, you can choose color schemes that will conform uh, to your branding, and you can get very specific by going out and looking up the right hex code for your color and use that here. Um, so, uh, and that's easy to do, by the way. If you just Google, there are hex code lookup sites where you can grab a screenshot from, say, your website and upload it, and, and it'll give you the hex code, which you could then copy and paste right into here. Uh, so that's useful information, maybe another video for another day. Then we'll go to appearance and over here, if, you, if I had uploaded a logo that would show up here and then the next section here is where we establish where the logo gets placed, left, middle or right, or of course don't display the logo at all. Uh, the rest of this is very straightforward. We can establish the font, the size, the height, the alignment and so on. Um, we can print window envelope compatible on pay stubs and use letterhead paper and all that stuff that I would never do for the reasons I just explained. Uh, this I like, show account summary. Uh, and this addresses the situation that I've been into before, especially uh, before I stopped invoicing um, hourly and started invoicing flat rate. But anyway, what this does is it puts the customer on notice if there's a previous balance from prior to the invoice that we're sending today. And I've had that experience where a customer has paid a more recent invoice leaving out an older one, and obviously it's because they didn't know about it, forgot it, lost it, who knows, and now I've got to go chasing them to get payment on the older invoice. Little did I know, they simply didn't know about it, and that's why it had not yet been paid. So this at least opens up the uh, possibility that maybe they have it and they can search their email, find it, and pay both, or at least if they don't have it, it raises the question so that they can ask us and we can uh, resend it, do whatever we need to so that we get everything paid right away. 
So I'll save that. The only reason you might not want to include that is that um, it does obviously add space to the uh, template layout. So that uh, if you have a lot of details on your invoice and you're concerned about it bleeding over onto a second page, that might be a reason for not including this. Uh, of course, we can tweak the header. We can call an invoice anything we want. We can call it a donor request or anything like that. Um, I don't recommend using custom transaction numbers because now that's one more thing you have to stop and think about. But I get that some businesses have to because it's just the nature of their workflow that they need to assign their own unique invoice number. Uh, certainly should include the website and phone number so that people can reach out to you while they're looking at your invoice in case they have any questions. Uh, terms, due date, again, all this is very straightforward. And of course, we have up to three custom fields that we can use on the invoice. Over to the activity table, I love to put the service date in there and I'll usually call it service date. Okay, the SKU only works on that area template. That's back over on the styles, right? Product or service, the category, description. I like to have the quantity and rate in the description column, unless of course I'm billing flat rate, which is uh, what I recommend. But in case you are billing by the hour, then I definitely would recommend showing the quantity and the rate. So it's clear to the customer what they're being charged for, you know, how many hours and at what rate. The more information you can provide a customer with on the invoice and mitigate the possibility that they're going to have questions, the uh, more expedient uh, payment will likely be on your invoices, right? And that's the name of the game at the end of the day here. You know, you can spend all this time coming up with the most gorgeous form, and it really doesn't matter. In fact, I'd argue that in some cases, we our form is made to look so gorgeous that it actually makes it difficult for the person who's trying to enter and pay your bill to find the information they need. So keep that in mind. Um, when you're thinking about this and you know especially if you're inclined to want to complain that you don't have a lot of options for the design layout here I would argue that the options they've given you here are designed in such a way that it makes it really easy for the person receiving your invoice to find and enter the information they need to make sure you get paid promptly and that's the most important thing the name of the game um, I've seen people get really hung up on they spend hours designing the perfect invoice form as though it's some kind of marketing collateral that's going to go into the office of the person who's making the decisions about whether or not and what to hire you for and the reality is that person's probably never going to see your invoice it's going straight to some AP person who really doesn't care about the design of your form um, I love these options here we can group the activity by day, week, or month. Uh, and now that we have groups in QuickBooks Online, we can subtotal them. Um, and then here are the, some other options, which are really straightforward. And of course, if you're not clear on how this is going to impact your invoice form, then by all means, try them, check them off, and then save it and preview it and see what it looks like on a real live invoice. Test that out. And if you don't like the way it looks, then you come right back in here and you change it. That's the only way you're going to get this sort of chiseled down to the perfect form in your view uh, in terms of what you want things to look like when they go out to your clients. So last and not least, last but not least, in the footer, we can include a customer message and some additional footer text. And again, you have some very basic formatting options around each of these. That, my friends, is everything I can show you on how to customize sales receipts in QuickBooks Online. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. I hope you had some fun and learned something along the way here, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.